Welcome to Christ Community Chapel, our online service for this weekend. My name is Stacy DiNardo and I'm a part of our staff team at Christ Community Chapel. Over these last few weeks, I've been learning a lot of new things. One of those things that I have been learning though is how much I miss being together with you. Being together as a church all together, and I know so many of our staff have been mentioning the same thing. We miss you. Whether you've been at Christ Community Chapel for a really long time, or if you might be just checking us out for the first time today, know that we cannot wait till the time that we can gather together again. But until then, nothing can stop us from taking time to focus on our God, our Savior, and our hope. And so we're going to do just that no matter what screen you're in front of now, a computer, a TV, a phone, we're going to take time to focus on God. And we're going to start that time by worshiping. But I wanted to mention one quick note. Early in March, we began to anticipate that we weren't going to be able to gather together in person. And so our worship and production teams took some time to record together the worship that we're going to hear today. And so while social distancing measures were not being practiced in the worship that you're going to watch today, know that it was before those measures were put in place. I'm going to read now from Psalm 145, verses 1 through 3, to prepare our hearts to worship our holy and great God. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Let's sing.
I love the last verse of that song. We're singing this song about our holy God and how holy and set apart he is. And then we get to that last verse and I'm reminded that that holy and amazing God invites me to call him Father. He invites me to have relationship with him as he's offered up his son. And he's inviting you to call him Father today too. And so let's open up ourselves to that. If you are new with us today, we are so glad that you're here. We're so grateful that you've joined us. And we really hope that this service is a time that you find joy and that you are offered a deep and profound hope. And we would love nothing more than to know that you are here and to get to know you a little bit more. And actually for anyone that is watching, now more than ever is a time that we want to provide support and care, whether it's physical support, whether it's emotional support, whether you're feeling alone right now in this time, we are here for you. So for anyone, email care at ccchapel.com and that will set in motion so that one of our staff team members can be in touch with you and be in touch with you very soon. Well, while we are worshiping by online with an online service, I also want to remind you to not let this become a mundane thing or a one-stop shop because there's actually so many resources that we have and want to be available to you. So follow us on Facebook or visit our website at ccchapel.com because it's there that you'll find devotionals that you can download, that you can view. We have a weekly video update from Pastor Joe that's on there as well. There's classes that we have been offering. There are corporate prayer times that are out there. So many different things. Resources for kids, CCC Kids Family Worship Time. So don't miss out and stay connected with us on one of those way ways, either Facebook or through our website. And it's also through our website or, or our app that you can give online. And if you call this your church, we invite you to do that. It's because so many of you have been giving generously that we've been able to continue to provide these resources and also just offer support to our local community. And we're so grateful to be able to do that. Well, 2020, this year, we have had a theme of Love Matters Most. And this week, we're starting a new series that is called Famous Stories of Love. And Pastor Joe's going to tell us more about that. But before we jump into our teaching time, let me pray for us. Father and God, we thank you for who you are, for your holiness, and the way that you are available to us and have given your son so that we can be close to you. We pray right now in this hard and difficult and very different time, God, that you would be made much of, but also that you would provide us the comfort, that you would bring healing to your land, that you will draw us close to you and draw others close to you in this time. We pray now that you will open up our hearts, God, to your word as Pastor Joe opens your word and that you will teach us and remind us of who you are and of your great love and that that is what matters most. So we give you this time and thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Christ Community Chapel Online. Uh, so glad that you have joined us. Uh, listen, if someone has sent you this link, and this is the first time that you have watched us, I just want to tell you I'm glad you're here. I'm Joe Coffey. I'm the lead pastor here at CCC. And welcome. All right. Uh, we have a theme at our church that will carry us through to September. And the theme is love matters most. That's it. Love matters most. And we're starting a new series right now that we are calling Famous Stories of Love uh, from the Bible. And uh, we wanted to call it uh, Famous Love Stories. Uh, but we know that whenever we say love stories, you probably think, a romantic love, uh, which is kind of too bad, because uh, last week, Easter, we celebrated the greatest love story the world has ever been told. And if you're a follower of Jesus, uh, last week uh, was the greatest love story you have ever been invited to be a part of. Uh, but I know it can be confusing, so this series we're calling uh, Famous Stories of Love. And this first story, uh, I'm excited about. I've been thinking about this for a while. Uh, it's the story of a Pharisee named Simon and a woman who's a prostitute, and they come into contact with Jesus. So let me go ahead and read the story. It's found in Luke chapter 7, 
uh, verses 36 through 50, uh, which is it's a long passage, but I think you'll find it uh, interesting. This is what it says. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him. And Jesus went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And behold, a woman of the city, who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment, and standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who's touching him, for she's a sinner. And Jesus answering said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, say it, teacher. A certain moneylender had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, the one I suppose for whom he canceled the larger debt. And he said to him, you have judged rightly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house, you gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who is forgiven little, loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at table with him began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This is God's word. Oh, I love that story. It's, a, it's an amazing story. Let me uh, start by just making sure that what you saw in your head as I read the story is what really happened. Because uh, in the Middle East in the first century, uh, inviting someone to a dinner like this was a big deal. And the houses were pretty small, but someone like Simon would have a, a little house, but he would have a big courtyard for things just like this. And when he would invite somebody like Jesus to dinner, the whole community would kind of know about it or find out about it. And in that culture, uh, it was all right for them. It was very common for them to walk around and kind of eavesdrop on the conversation and even to walk into the courtyard and actually be close to the dinner guests, even if they weren't invited. Which is why, if you paid attention to the text, no one even notices this woman until she begins to weep at Jesus' feet. The other thing that I wanted to clarify is, you know, that the text says that she was a woman of the city, a sinner. Uh, that's a colloquial term. Like we would say a woman of the night or maybe a streetwalker. That's why I have called her a prostitute. Okay. All right. This is where it gets uh, really interesting. I'm going to give you my three points. I have three points and a question. It's like a bonus question. All right, here are the three points. I want to talk about how a Simon and this woman are the same, how they're the same. I want to talk about how Simon and this woman are different, how they're different. The third point, I want to take a look at what Jesus gives to each of them. And then the question, the bonus question is, what do you want? What do you want? All right. All right. Let's uh, look at the first question. Uh, oh, let me say this too. If you are watching this and you are not a Christian, um, you have to love this story. I mean, it really is quite remarkable. I mean, who does this? Jesus doesn't act like a normal religious leader. In the way that he responds to this woman, in the way that he talks to Simon, this other religious leader. Anyway, uh, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, so I'll get back to that. All right, first question. 
How are uh, Simon and this woman the same? They're really the same in two ways. Uh, first, they're both seeking Jesus. They're both seeking Jesus. It's easy to, to tell with a woman, right? Because uh, she has come just to find Jesus. You know, I, I know I, I told you that it was uh, not uncommon in that time for during a dinner like this for people in the community to come and walk around and eavesdrop or even come into the courtyard, but, but not a woman like this. And if you paid attention to the text, you know, in verse uh, 37, it says, Behold, a woman of the city was a sinner when she learned that Jesus was reclining at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment. She didn't come to eavesdrop. She didn't come out of curiosity. She came to find Jesus. She was seeking Jesus. But Simon is also seeking Jesus. It was a big deal for him to invite Jesus to dinner. That's a whole different thing than going up to Jesus and peppering him with questions while he's teaching in the marketplace or in the temple. Right? In this culture, to invite somebody to dinner was to invite them to relationship. Big risk for Simon being a Pharisee. There's only one other Pharisee in the New Testament that actually went to Jesus to meet with him, and that was Nicodemus. And he went to Jesus at night, presumably, so no one would see him. So both Simon the Pharisee, and this woman, who's a prostitute, are seeking Jesus. They are wanting an encounter with Jesus in one way or another. That's one of the ways that they're the same. The other way that they're the same is the way that Jesus sees them. And this is fascinating to me. This is where the story really gets interesting. Because Jesus decides to tell Simon a story. And he starts the story by saying uh, there were two debtors. Listen, if Jesus ever decides to tell you a story and there are two people in the story, you can pretty much assume you're one of the people he's talking about. All right. So Jesus says to Simon, uh, this is the way he starts the story. A certain moneylender had two debtors. One owned, owed 500 denarii and the other 50. All right. That's just brilliant. What he says is this. There are two people who owe money. One owes a lot, and one owes one-tenth the amount. But here's the way they're the same. Neither can pay. Neither can pay. Right? So they're both in the same boat. It doesn't matter if you owe 10 times or you owe one-tenth. It doesn't matter if you can't pay. You are in trouble. I heard it described like this that uh, you can have one person who dies peacefully in their sleep, and you have another person who was mauled to death by a lion and just torn to shreds. Both are equally dead, right? One is dead and still looks good, and one is dead and is really messy, but they're both dead. So Jesus starts this and says, Simon, you're a really good person, aren't you? You are a religious person. But I want you to know, you're dead. You look good, but you're dead. And you're looking at this woman, and she's also dead. And she's messy dead, but you're both the same. And listen, if someone has sent you this link, and they have said to you, listen, I really want you to watch this. And I hope they have. And I hope, I mean, that's great. Keep watching but I don't want you to assume it's because they think that you are 10 times worse than they are. They may think that you are one-tenth the sinner that they are. But they're saying, listen, I want you to know that we're both in the same boat. And I want you to find what I have found in Jesus. All right. That brings me to the second point, which is how they're different. How Simon the Pharisee and this woman who's a prostitute are different. Uh, I was uh, talking to a man who's been coming to our church for a while, and he said, I love the church, I love coming, but I've noticed something, and that's that uh, my friends who have been coming, 
Uh, they talk about Jesus in a different way. They feel Jesus, and I don't feel Jesus. What is going on with me? Right? It's a great question. If you've been coming to the church for a while and you feel that same way, then this is going to be really important for you. This woman, the way she responds to Jesus is markedly different than the way Simon responds. Both are seeking Jesus. Both owe a debt they can't pay. But she comes and she begins to weep at Jesus. She falls down at his feet. Her tears cascading onto his feet. She wipes off his feet with her hair. She takes a vial of perfume and breaks it open and pours it out. She is undone, right? Simon responds differently. Simon is not undone. He doesn't fall at Jesus' feet. He doesn't weep, right? They're very different, but the question is, why? What makes them different? I don't know if you've ever uh, talked to a friend or heard a politician or a movie star or somebody like that say that, you know, they'll, they'll say something like, you know what, uh, I don't believe that Jesus is the only way to God. Um, I don't even, I don't really believe the death and resurrection of Jesus, but I love the teachings of Jesus. I, I just go by his teachings. The, I love when he says, um, judge not lest ye be judged. Love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, wonderful. I just want to be more like Jesus. I think that's what Jesus wants. He wants us to be more like him. And what they do is they separate Jesus and Jesus' teaching. And that's what you have with Simon and this woman. Simon is interested in Jesus. He's seeking Jesus. He wants his teaching. In fact, in the passage, Jesus says, I have something to tell you, Simon. And what's Simon say? Simon says, tell me, teacher. Say it, right? He wants Jesus to tell him how to be a better person, how to live a better life, right? But he, he is just wanting the teachings of Jesus, which is why he is unmoved. This woman... She doesn't come for the teachings of Jesus. She comes for Jesus. She's not looking uh, for advice on how to be a better person. Anybody in town could tell her how to be a better person. What she is looking for is someone who can forgive her. Someone who can wash her clean, who can actually change her. And for that, she needs a person. She needs a person. Listen, if you uh, have been coming to church for a while and you are not really changed, then you might be Simon. You like the teaching. You like the experience of church. But when you hear other people talk about Jesus, when other people, when they talk about Jesus, they tear up and you wonder what in the world is going on with them. This is what it is. And that brings me to what Jesus gives to each of them. So we've seen how they're the same and how they're different. Now, what does Jesus give to each of them? He gives each of them what they want. Simon wanted teaching. Jesus gives him a seminar. Jesus gives him a story. He says, Simon, you want to hear a story? And, and then he asked Simon the question, which one of these two has been forgiven the most. And Simon says, I suppose the one who was forgiven the most. It is the one that loves the most. He answered the question correctly. But he walks away unchanged. He doesn't fall at Jesus' feet. He doesn't weep. He doesn't, he's not transformed, right? He doesn't get any of that. Then the question is, what does the woman get? Oh my, she gets everything, right? She gets someone who will forgive her. She gets someone who will 
love her and she weeps and comes undone because of what Jesus means to her. Listen, this is what happens. If you separate Jesus' teaching from his death and resurrection, what you will have is something that's very impersonal. You'll have something that doesn't really change you. But if you will take the Jesus of the Bible, the one who went to the cross to die for you, the one who was resurrected with power for you, the one we celebrated last week, well, then he can change everything about you. It's like Jesus goes to this woman and he says to her, woman, your sins, give them to me. I will take them from you. And then he heads to the cross. Boy, when you see this woman, right? She, she falls at his feet. You know, the, the passage says that she undoes her hair. She lets her hair down, which was uh, absolutely you know, crazy in that culture. And it, it talks about that alabaster flask, uh, which is a fascinating Then Commentators will say that that's a, a flask that was very, very expensive. Very few women would have a flask like that. And that flask was specially made, so it would only give a, like one or two drops at a time. It had a very, very skinny neck. So when it says that she broke it, that meant that she snapped off that neck so that the entire uh, contents of that flask would pour out. Women would use a flask like that. The reason it was so expensive is because, you know, in the Middle East in the first century, there wasn't a lot of bathing that went on. Part of what made a woman attractive was perfume. And here's a woman who her livelihood, what she had counted on was connected somehow to that flask. She takes that and she breaks it and she pours it all out on Jesus' feet. Why? What she is saying is, I don't need this anymore because I have Jesus. I have Jesus. That brings me to the last question, the bonus question. What is it that you really want? What is it that you really have? Listen, if you've been coming to church for, I don't care how long, and it's been a long time since you have ever teared up, since you have ever felt overwhelmed, then what may be happening is that you're separating Jesus and Jesus' teaching. And while you enjoy Jesus' teaching, and Jesus was a great teacher, the best, but if all you have is Jesus' teaching, you are missing the very best part of Jesus, right? Because his teaching isn't the magic that can actually transform you. His teaching isn't the power that can change you. Jesus' death and resurrection, what we celebrated last week, is the secret to forgiveness. It's the secret to change. It's the secret to power. And when we get that, then, oh, everything changes. Then you can begin to experience joy. You can experience love. You can even experience the power to forgive others. You know, there's a saying that says, you cannot give what you have not received. That is maybe never more true than when it comes to forgiveness. So if you're struggling with forgiving people, it might be that you need to return and make sure you have Jesus and you've experienced his forgiveness. And if you've experienced his forgiveness, then you have something to give others. Right? Don't miss out on the very best part of Jesus by separating it. Learn from the story. If you're like Simon, go back to the cross because the death and resurrection of Jesus means everything because it means that you're loved. And that's why when it comes to Jesus, love always matters most. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being a part. And now let's worship together to finish out. Old things have passed away. Your love has stayed the same. Your constant grace remains the
been such a great time of worship and a great time of teaching this weekend. And at Christ Community Chapel, we always want to be pointing you to your next step. So don't stop with this moment. Think about what is next for you, what God has in store for you. And again, if it's questions about who Jesus is, if it's questions about how you can receive the support you need, or maybe a neighbor needs support, email us. And another email address to contact us with things like that is nextstep at ccchapel.com. We can't wait to be together again next weekend. Don't forget to check out resources that we have on our website throughout this week. And let me close with a prayer. God, thank you for this time. Thank you that we can worship you in our living rooms. Wherever we are, God, you are accessible and your mercy is poured out on us every single day, every single morning. I pray that you will help us to feel that and to understand that more deeply now, more than ever. Go before us. Let us move out of this time again with purpose and looking to you, looking to our great God who provides the hope and the salvation that we need. In Jesus' name, amen.